What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well out there. Today we're going to be taking a look at the gear that I have amassed to help me tackle the first custom keyboard build that I'm going to be doing on this channel. And one of the things that I'm going to be doing with this build is lubricating the switches. So I wanted to make sure that I had the best possible experience for myself and I wanted to share the gear with you all just in case this was something you were considering getting into for yourself. Now, there will be links to as many of these items as possible down in the video's description. If not, there will be uh, some reasonable substitutes that are there. Also, make sure you're subscribed and notified so you know every time I upload fresh content for you. I've got some spicy stuff coming up for the channel soon. You're not gonna wanna miss it. And of course, if you like what you see here, make sure you hit that like button as well. But without further ado, let's get into the parts we have on hand. So to start off with, the lube we're using. Most folks use a Crytox 205 Grade Zero lubricant. It's widely considered to be one of the best options out there with a nice balance of weight and viscosity to it to give your switches and stabilizers that nice buttery smooth feel. I, on the other hand, decided to go a slightly different route and went with the glorious PC Gaming Race G Lube that they just released. This was one of the first batches that went out. It is not a Crytox formulation. This is their own in-house formulation for switch and stabilizer lubricant, and it retails for about 10 bucks on their website. And each container is advertised to cover about 500 or so switches. So that sounds like a pretty decent value to me. Again, links for that and everything else will be down in the video's description. Now, as far as applying the lube is concerned, I'm going to suggest using some brushes. Now, the finer the tip, the better, up to a certain point. And I'm not entirely sure which size is gonna wind up working best for me, but I opted for this three pack of tester branded brushes just in case. It gives me a couple different sizes to work with, so if I want to apply more lube over a broader surface on the switch, I can do that. If I want to be more detail oriented with this number three brush, I can go ahead and do that as well. Now, of course, you will need a way to open your switches. Technically, you can get away with something like a number zero flathead screwdriver, but that's kind of a pain in the ass, and you run the risk of either hurting yourself or damaging the switch housing in the process. So I would recommend getting yourself a proper switch housing opener. I went with this all aluminum model from KBD Fans and it's actually really, really well built. If I had one complaint about it, it's just that there's no groove along the edge to open this up a little bit easier because it does have magnets that holds it shut and it's got this little key ring thing that holds the whole thing together. But basically, each half of this is designed for opening either cherry or kale style switch housings. Basically, all you do is just line up the switch inside the correct housing, depress the stem all the way down until you hear the, uh, the halves of the body come apart, and there you have it. It may take a couple of tries per switch to get this right and to get used to the rhythm and feel of it. I know I still have some work to do on it, but trust me, you're going to want to spend the money on a good switch opener. This one from KBD Fans only ran me like 25 bucks. Now, if you're working with a keyboard that is hot swap but already has switches and caps pre-installed, say you got something like the GMMK TKL Ice White Edition or something like that, and you wanna work on those switches or add your own, you are going to need some switch and cap removal tools. These two tools that I have right here came with items that I had purchased already. The cap puller came with the Frozen Llama cap set that I got from Ducky, and the switch puller came with my GMMK TKL in the first place. But if whatever board you're working with didn't come with either of these tools, I will have some links down in the video's description. You shouldn't need to spend a whole lot on these though. They basically just need to get the job done of safely and effectively removing caps and switches from the keyboard. I'm also going to recommend you have a set of fine tip uh, tweezers on hand, uh, especially if you're going to be working with lubricating some of the smaller components uh, on your switches or handling anything excessively. You wanna avoid getting dirt and oils from your hand onto any of these components, because if you get some foreign matter inside the switch after, you've done, after you're done doing your thing with it, you may have a bad time. Now you're also going to want the appropriate tools to disassemble or assemble slash reassemble your keyboard, depending on whether or not you're working on the stabilizers. Most of the time you're gonna be dealing with either a plate mount or a PCB mount stabilizer. Either way, you're gonna need to disassemble the keyboard to get to it. In my case, I only need a number zero and number one Phillips head screwdriver kit, but your mileage may vary. Maybe the keyboard you got is working with Torx bits or something like that. Just make sure you pay attention to what it is you're working with and get the appropriate tools for it. 
If you're not sure what you need to use, hop online and ask someone. I am positive there are folks out there that'll be able to help you figure out what you need to get your build underway. Now, if you do decide to jump down this rabbit hole, you are going to need a place to keep all of these small components neat, organized, and as easy to lube up as possible. So that's where the lube station comes into play. I specifically went with the Space Cables Lube Station because of its combination of switch accommodation and form factor. It's a single layer acrylic body that has six rubber feet on the bottom of it and it'll hold up to 63 switches worth of components at one time. This includes the bottom housing, the spring if you keep it inside the bottom housing, and the stem. I like that this is a really simple design that manages to hold a lot of switches and not take up a whole lot of room on your desk in the process. You will of course need some place extra to keep the top housings for the switches, but by and large, this is one of the best options that's out there. There are others that do some things differently, some things better, some things worse, but it's my personal opinion that the Space Cables Lube Station gives you the best of all worlds. Now there is some gear here that I would personally consider to be optional, but nice to have all the same starting with a pair of side cutters. It may happen in the course of your keyboard building experience that you accidentally purchase switches that are five pin, where your keyboard requires three pin switches. The only difference between a three pin and a five pin switch most of the time is the two additional plastic pins on the bottom of the five pin housing that leave it more stable inside a PCB for you to solder them in place. Usually they'll still have the clip in uh, posts that on the front and back of the switch so you can still use them in a plate mounted hot swap configuration, but plate mounted hot swap boards typically don't have accommodations for five pin switches, so you need to clip the plastic bits off. It is safe to do that, it's not going to cause any functional harm to the switch. Another optional thing I've got on hand is the switch films that I got from KBD fans. Again, these are not required, but in your journey of custom keyboard builds. You may come across a series of switches that you've purchased or custom assembled from different top and bottom housings that have a little bit of excess slop in them. And as you're typing, depending on the nature of that slop and the type of switch the slop exists in, that can make for an awkward feeling typing experience. These little gaskets basically shore up that slop in the top and bottom housing and make the switches just feel a little bit more firm. And last but certainly not least, I've got a spare set of Gateron style plate mount stabilizers. Again, purchased from KBD fans, these came to me pre-lubricated, so these are literally a plug and play solution. And as far as I can see, there's very generous lube here. I got these mostly because I want to see if it's the design of the stabilizers that my GMMK is currently using that's causing the slop, or if it's a matter of lubrication, or maybe a little bit of both. I also wanted to get these because they are white instead of black, and it creates just a little bit more pop on the keyboard. But again, not super required. If your keyboard has great stabilizers to begin with, fantastic. Leave them alone don't touch them. And last but certainly not least, uh, I would recommend some kind of clean lint-free surface to work on, preferably something that's got some raised edges to it. A desk mat actually serves this purpose really well, preferably one that you don't mind getting a little bit of switch grease on. In this instance, I'm using a Tilted Nation synth desk mat. Uh, again, there will be links for this down in the video's description. I went with this one because it's not quite as large as some of the other uh, large and XL format desk mats that are out there. It's got nice raised edges from the stitching on the side of it, so if one of my tools or a spring or something starts rolling away from me, it's less likely to roll off the table. And again, it's dust and lint free, so this is gonna help minimize the likelihood of foreign material getting into the switch while I'm working on them. And of course, you're gonna need a keyboard to work on with some switches. Off camera, I'm going to be practicing with my GMMK TKL here. Now, I'm not expecting to get a whole lot out of lubricating kale speed silvers. These already, as I said in a previous video, feel pretty good out of the box. It's mostly the stabilizers that I have a problem with on this keyboard, as you can listen to right here. Yeah, that, that just, that doesn't sound great. 
So I'd like to shore that up and make this keyboard everything it can be. And again, get some practical hands-on experience before I get into the custom build that we're going to be doing next month. So yeah, I guess that's gonna pretty much cover it. This is what I would consider to be an ideal setup of supplies and equipment to make the most out of a custom keyboard experience. Now, this obviously doesn't include things like a soldering iron or solder or things like that. I've not quite gotten that adventurous with my keyboard builds just yet, but this is a great place to start if you're gonna be working with a lot of hot swap boards. Sound off in the comments below if you have any suggestions for any other tools or equipment or maybe some different stuff other than what I have here that you or someone else has used and had some success with. Also, remember to toss the video a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. I'll catch you all next time. Take it easy.